got to play right away. Give us one minute. Gentlemen, this is what's going on with this one. I am over there. I'm not presiding, but I am over there if you need me. Okay, there is a 30 second shot clock on this one. If you have one of the squares lit up, that means you still have an extension. You get a minute after the break. After that, it's a 30 second shot clock. One extension per rack. Pull it out loud so we can hear you. So you can open it up. I am not presiding, but I am here. So if you need me to look at the shot, I'm right there. Just tell me that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Vinci, you ready? Yeah, ready. And we are live at the CSI Pro Arena. The Rio host. Hotel, All Suites Hotel and Casino. The Q Sport International Expo features the BCA Pool League, World Championships, USA Pool League, National Championships, and of course this, the Diamond Las Vegas Open 10 Ball. 128 players, double elimination, race to seven, alternate breaks, world standardized rules, no early 10 balls, and we have a fifth round winners match for you. I'm in the booth with Jeremy Jones. This is George Teachea. And we've got two great players, Jeremy. Yeah, two of the, uh, you know, Justin seems like you know, he's been around. He's been such a great player for such a long time, a, a great junior player, but still, I believe, 31 or 32 years old. Uh, 32. He's 32. Yeah. yeah. And I think James is like 27. Correct. Uh, Perfect. So, um, but yeah, two of the younger <laughs> guys that are going to be around mm -hmm. still for a long time playing this game. and playing it at a high level. Justin coming off a big win just a moment ago. Both these guys. Uh, you could say that James was a bit more of a favorite in his match where uh, in his last round against Ian, who ha is having a great tournament here in his hometown of Las Vegas, uh, Ian Costello, but Justin coming off beating Ko Ping Yi. Big win. And really... Probably the most controlled break. Well, he put a little more into that one now. I was watching him in his last match, and he, he seemed to be breaking the balls pretty good. Yeah, it's not like, mm -hmm. a, you know, a typical break for most of the guys you see. So he'll use a variety of lighter speeds at, at times. Well, we are sponsored by Diamond Billiards, Kamui, JB Cases, Omega, World Pool Billiard Association. And James's, let's see, he went through Kengo Suzuki, John Mora. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Justin. Yeah, went Justin, through. yeah. I, got the, I was reading the wrong guy. I was guy like, here. dang, they played the Damn, same guy. Damn, they played guy. the same guys? <laughs> <laughs> Rory Hendrickson, Chris Smelling, uh, Maximilian Lechner. That's quite a quite a win there, and he just got done as Jeremy said with Ian Costello. Okay, should just come straight across and lay somewhat on the side rail where he's standing, uh, probably before the side, trying not to contact the seven. Not saying it's a big deal, but he probably wants to go around and play, you know, two rail position, kind of in the center of the table for the three. I'm guessing. The problem here is the five and. I think it plays in the side. But the thing is, he want, he needs to get decent on the four uh, to make sure he can hold for that side pocket on the five. Mm -hmm. So you got to come below the nine. Yeah, here he'll just drift out a couple rails, and I think you know it. Oh, that's going to be uh, not anything he expected. And now he's really got to come with with one on, mm -hmm. and whether he elevates and tries to pop this, come to the left side of the seven, tries to kind of smooth it in and maybe come straight down the table. We'll see. Use it a little left, maybe? Well, and go maybe straight. Rails to it? Maybe simplifying the shot, just straight English. Yeah, and that's what he was doing, just really trying to bear down on making the ball. Well, a quick, quick change of uh, table control there. James taking over on what I thought he might be able to handle and get back on that four ball. Again, the uh, little concern, of course, with the eight as well. It'll only have really one lower left corner pocket, but the five ball is still the main concern. So he doesn't want to get too thin on the four. Do you like going from the four into the nine for the five in the side? Maybe. Um, I think he'll probably just kill his ball here. You can see that's a oh, great okay. camera yeah, angle. A great and actually, camera the five angle. goes. 
So we were full, to be, but it's still a lot easier to get on the side as well. And that he does. Yeah, I just thought it uh, wasn't quite as available as it is. And James, uh, another one of those young players that really has all the tools. I, I think he has the right kind of mind when it comes to playing position, using a lot of natural angles. And we got to see him on the stream table versus uh, Chris Milling. Which he won 7-5. Okay, should come two rails around or draw out of this. Kind of depends on how, how he wants to play it. You know, Justin's, Justin's uh, previous match was a little delayed, so he got a late start. So he came right off a of plan, which, mm. you know, many pros and cons there as far as, like, getting a little time to get a breath of fresh air, but which he did get a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. But James won uh, a couple hours earlier, so. Was it that long ago? I think so, yeah. somewhat like that, yeah. Because Ian was already knee deep in his loser side match whenever mm -hmm. I was here earlier. So got another great winner side match. Another American, Chris Robinson, about to start with Clint, uh, Clint Ikachi. Ikachi uh, was trailing Jeff DeLuna in his match, and he came back and won that, I yeah, guess. Yeah, DeLuna had a real unfortunate scratch. Hill Hill, I was watching it, uh, made once one of those power shots we talked about with the draw stroke mm -hmm. unbelievable from the two to the four got a little thin on the four had to let the cue ball go a little bit and scratched off the 10 in the corner with you know i think it was the five seven eight nine ten left hill hill so ouch yeah he's in a battle on the loser side with his fellow countrymen right mm -hmm. now carlo beato oh, uh, nine ball uh, going straight oh, uh, cue balls wow. uh, flirting there uh, ooh, it got just how many of these kisses have we seen, though? <laughs> to go to that pocket. Yeah. In fact, uh, Shane got lost the tournament on a shot like that. And actually, James uh, had a similar kiss in the match we did when he played, uh, who was it earlier, you said? Chris Milley. That's right. Actually kind of let Chris a little bit back, back in. in the match. Yeah. yeah. yeah and this is tough to feather, so, and maybe get by the four. He'd like to do that and maybe drop below the seven and really put him in jail. That would be the ideal one here. That's what you're kind of shooting for is, is get him underneath this seven ball. Can you see? I think he can. Yeah, I think he can too. So what do you do? Do you hit it hard and overcut the one quite a bit, hoping the six and two hold the cue ball, and maybe you can knock the one back around table? How about hitting it hard with a little bit, of, uh, pretty hard with a little bit of high English, and hope that one ball uh, hits something up on top, and the cue ball stays on the on the bottom rail. Yeah, like use the yeah. six two, right? Yes. I, I don't even think you have to like warp it with the six two okay. there. You just cut it quite a bit. That way, the one doesn't hit the eight. Um, and I'm pretty sure you might get a du unlucky double kiss, but mm -hmm. I think you kind of stay there. But the thing is, you could play it on the soft side, too. Yeah, with a little bit of draw, like you or, just said. Yeah. Or just soft and get the one by the eight is all. Yeah. So it's up to him. I like that one myself. Yeah, the, oh, look at this. Yeah, great shot. And the main reason is you get to let your stroke out instead of rolling the ball nine mm -hmm. feet. You know, you get to control the, the hit a little bit more. James is sitting nice, though. You can see a 10-7 there. If he gets contact on the one, if he, at a running speed, he sh could get very safe. Oh, he went long. But you could see coming down that path, if he hits that good side of the one, yeah. any kind of way, he's going to drop the cue ball below the 7 and the 10. Well, now everything is opened up, and uh, Justin has ball in hand. We'll see how he wants to play it. Three ball goes to the side or to the corner. And he's going to draw to for the two on the side here. We come right back to about where he is now. Yeah, and he's still got a lot of work, though, because he's got to drop on the five nice to get all the way up on the six, and he's got to have an angle on the six to come down for the seven, seven and back for the eight. So yeah, that's this is kind of one of those, even yeah. though the first couple are pretty easy, George. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that he's going to move around quite a bit. and. Yeah. Oh, this is okay. Can yeah, and you, you notice the six, seven, and eight aren't too close to any pocket. So when you have to move the ball up and down the table when they're more towards the middle of the rail, well, that's the most difficult situation, really. Mm -hmm. 
and Justin, you know, m many consider probably the best position player of the Americans that play at uh, full time now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. He does move his cue ball very accurately, very pinpoint. Yeah, and most of the stuff he does makes sense. Clean patterns. Yeah. And like there, he knows once he gets across it, he's okay. And, and and even if he gets just heavy and not across it, he's probably all right also. So I like that better than trying to drop in the side pocket below the five where you, That's if you just, over just hit a little up, yeah. bit, yeah, you could yeah. get real funny. No, I, I like this right here. And he just uh, chose his spot for the, for the, to get to the seven for the, and he just put it right where he uh, was looking at. Yeah, he's got a more, he, natural takes him kind of underneath the 10, so now he'll maybe want to get all the way to the bottom rail and off the rail with the cue ball just in case he falls straight on the 7 and he can draw the cue ball out. He'd like to play the other side, but natural takes him to the side where the 10's at, so and that's going to be overhit a little bit, so he's going to need a pretty decent bounce off the third rail oh. here, and that's enough. Yeah, The English got him that. Just that little bit of inside. You had mentioned that uh, before this match that Justin, interesting enough, came off is coming off this table, um, and they both played on it. So I don't mm -hmm. think there's really an advantage there. But he played a match without the shot clock, and we know he can be a, a, a player that wants to take his time when he can. Mm -hmm. um, but doesn't seem to be phasing him so far. Huh? So far, it just started, but then the things are kind of pretty open, and he's 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 chosen his path uh, pretty wisely, as we can see, because it was very successful, and it was not the easiest of runouts. No, it's not. And, you know, his, his his mind works pretty well when it comes to running the balls. So, a lot of times, you can see when he's t taking his time more, it's more of checking his work rather than really changing his. You know, d initial decisions too much. Well, he uh, stole uh, a break from James there. Goes up 1 0, and now he's breaking the balls. And this alternate break format. And this match right here will get you to the final four on the winner's side, which is. Really, when you get to there, you're really like uh, anything can happen. You can lose a match, still win the tournament, you know, reasonably mm -hmm. anyways. Uh, I mean, you can lose your first match and win the tournament, but that's a hard, hard deal right there trying to win. <laughs> but, I mean, once you get to that final four of the winner's side, you're really in striking. Uh, striking distance. Yeah. yeah. You're in pretty good shape. You're, getting, you're feeling some pep in your step. Yeah. Uh, you know, and taking on a loss even at that point, mm -hmm. you know. You can realistically think, hey, let me regroup, put a few matches together, get in the finals, and see what happens. Now, since the final match is a race to nine, and you don't have to double dip the opponent, is it better to kind of come to the loser side? Well, of course, you know, because you you're, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. You mean once you get there? Yeah. Okay. If you yeah. get there, yeah. don't lose a match early. Don't lose a match on purpose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, once you get there, I don't know. But I mean, I've heard talk from several players that you uh, know sometimes that long wait in between. I think, you know, if it's, can, can, I don't think it'll be that long of a wait anyways here in this, you know, in pro events, they schedule it a little differently to where it's not that long of a wait. And these guys are prepared for that. Okay. You know, those weekend tournaments, you could, you know, there's a valid argument there where, you know, you win the winner side at, you know, four in the afternoon and then they have to play a lot of loser side matches sure, on, on a Sunday and exactly. could be yeah. even later. Yeah. Right. So, but that's all up to you. I mean, you got to learn to prepare for that. So you know, I'm, so most of them don't open. don't lock you in a room yeah. where you can't hit balls or something. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, I have been to some tournaments uh, in places to where they don't let you to allow you to practice. Well, there isn't a all. table to practice on because they rent them out real quick. Or? No, or or pro tournaments in some countries they used to run events to where you had to go down the street to a pool room even with tables. Oh open. wow! Oh yeah, yeah. No practice. No in, practice in, room, in the venue no, in the venue at okay. all. So yeah, because some some venues have a practice room. Yeah. Okay, roll out here that he shouldn't get this back no matter what 
James plays here, probably putting him up behind the nine. Oh, he's playing it mild. Okay. So that was interesting to me. I thought with the two, four, five, and a uh, two, four, nine, and ten there, he would bank the one up table towards the pocket and play the cue ball back behind those balls because he could have banked it up, mm -hmm. you know, all the way, all the way yeah, up sure. and and done the same thing with the cue ball. It seems like, anyways. And use those three balls for maybe a little cover. Yeah, and if you snooker them on two of those balls, it's hard to jump, right? Yeah. Now, is it a pretty standard rule that, uh, you know, when the beeper starts going off uh, and you're down on the ball, as long as you don't get up, it's not a foul? Uh, I've so seen Justin's that more often. That? Yeah, and I've seen that more often than not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, he's going to play the same shot again. That he, I think he could have done the same thing, but now much more successful. And Justin nice. a little irritated at himself. He didn't get that snooker in the last last shot. Now he'll want to. Is he going to go two rails at this and hit it real thin? I might soft kick this, yeah. uh, just because I feel like I can be pretty accurate going one rail on top of the one, and I could actually get him pretty snookered on the three believe it or not okay he's going two nothing wrong with that but and he's going to leave the one ball definitely going to leave a shot straight in but also on the next on that other kick shot i was talking about you know when you don't snooker him he's probably going to jam you up again mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you got another kick at it so oh this looks a little just stay right there for the side go up. Yeah, it's pretty routine. Well, actually, it's a little tricky to go to the four ball from the three if he just stops it there. Yeah, I think the four goes in both pockets, though. Oh, okay, it goes on the left. Yeah. And he just looked at that. Yeah, I think he would have. Yeah, there you go. That's a great camera angle there. Purple four matching. Mm. Matching well, Aranis' shirt. No, will he ask the, I guess he'll just shoot right over the template. And he'll probably draw to the rail here. He could take the long distance, but, I mean, if you're supposed to move the cue ball here, I think go ahead and do it, right? Don't get flat on the five. Yeah, go ahead and do this right here. Yeah. Get a little closer to the ball. You, you're going to be very accurate. And also, you don't have that settling mentality, you know, so. I don't think these guys have a... Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not saying you're not yeah, supposed yeah. No, to no, sometimes, exactly, but, but I mean, you know, but, uh, I'm a firm believer. If you have good position, go ahead go and keep, keep attacking going. to yeah. keep good position. I think that's a there's a valid argument there. Yep. This looks pretty good for uh, for James here tie things up and get back on break. I just really like it. James's fundamentals and stroke. High right elbow. Really gets a lot on the cue ball easily. Chin down on the ball. And Justin knows James very well. They played a lot of pool together. And uh, he knows falling behind on his own break with James, the way he breaks the balls. Uh, Can be costly. Oh, yeah, very quickly. We're going to look at uh, the final eight of the winner side, the countries that are represented. Can we get that? I know final we have two Americans. Side, sure. Yeah, I know we have two Americans with Justin Bergman. Here on your screen, okay, and Chris got, Robinson. So the final eight would be you got Ralph. Uh, let's just go to the top. There we go. So we got Ralph Suke. All right, Germany. Uh, Karl Skowarski, Poland. From Poland. James Aranas, Philippines. Philippines. So that's three uh, countries. Justin Bergman, USA. USA. Uh, Jun Ling Chang. All right, Chinese Taipei. Five. Kun Lin Wu. Chinese Taipei. Eklan Kaji, Albania. Albania. Chris Robinson, USA. Mm -hmm. 
That's it. That's so it. we have six countries out of the eight players represented. Pretty good. With what is it? Two Chinese Thai pl two players Chinese. and two Americans. One Filipino and one one uh, Poland. You don't. We don't see it much with as good as the guys break the balls these days, especially racking with the template. But these got grouped together a little funny, George. Yeah, the four, four, five, six there. Well, that's a nice shot. And I think if he can get by the seven, he can play a four, six carom shot maybe, or maybe the four even goes in the side. He has to follow this ball though, right? Yeah, because that's going to go off the seven and scratch. The side. Yeah. yeah. If he follows through it, I think he can beat the scratch. I think he goes past it. Now, if he hits it kind of hard, maybe he just still glances off and scratches. But I think if he puts a nice, well, he's can he stop it behind a seven? I think he's playing safe. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. Good touch. Yeah. He made that look a lot easier than it was. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. he, he did. Did a great job of just setting the ball right there, stopping it right there. Okay. He's going to size this up and give it a pretty good ch chance of going. I think he'll threaten the pocket here, George, if not make it. Well, you saw him start to get up, and, and uh, that shot clock put him back down on the ball. <laughs> well, he's got a pocket to the left. Yeah, and he doesn't quite have a, a full enough two ball to just bank it down, back down table, and stick him on the seven. So he probably shoots at this. Shoots going oh, two no. rails? No. Watch outside pocket. Watch outside uh -oh. pocket. Off the nine. Yeah, right in it. Exactly. Right in it. Yeah. And that's where. You know, 30 second shot clock is not a lot of time, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, whenever I kind of feel like whenever they're not like totally secure about the safety, you could tell that was kind of like, oh, let me put the two on the back rail and see what happens with the cue ball. I, mm -hmm. I kind of felt like, why not shoot? I think for these guys, I, I, I thought he had a nice shot to shoot yeah, it in the corner, and go, go two rails, exactly. two rails down for the four exactly. on the side. And you know, I'm not picking this shot apart so yeah. as much as, hey. These guys' instincts are like, you know how they just get down sometimes when they're practicing and just mm -hmm. knock these oh, balls in. they just in. fire away. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like to see when, when the shot clock really gets in play, go a little more with the offensive shot, I think, unless you really know the safety's going to do you some good. They yeah, keep your rhythm. Yeah, yeah I mean. You're what, an instinctive I mean, player, go. Yeah, and they, go, and they do it so well. So. Yep. Good point. Well, and that was an unlucky scratch, don't get me wrong, oh. but if he lays the two on the eight and he doesn't snooker him, he's probably got the worst of it. All right, looks like this goes, maybe. Yeah, it goes in the side right there, I think, and then you can get on the five for the corner. If he plays the carom here, he's got to draw this to play it a little bit, and uh, he could get snookered behind the nine. Well, he played safe. That's a smart shot. I mean, he's got to spin it. He's got to take it wide of the seven with a light straight. spin. The good thing about that, that's exactly the good way to get position. Meaning yeah. if he makes the kick here lightly, he just naturally floats to the side rail and has a shot on the five. And he just called it in the side. Oh, my. Yeah. Right between the two well, of he's them. He's on two fouls, so he can bank this four away like a one-pocket oh. shot and mm -hmm. sneak right up on the backside of the six. And not in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bank the four mm -hmm. between the six, nine, and follow the cue ball right up on the six ball for the third foul. I mean, sure. he's going to go ahead and draw the ball and break these out, but he doesn't have to come away with a shot here. He could end up on top of the five. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And, I like the safety there for the three foul. Yeah, and I'm, you know. But then again, like like you've mentioned, these guys kick so well. Well, it's been a long day, too. I'm not so sure that Justin uh, was still aware he was on two. Because I think he would have considered a safety if, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if he had had that on his mind. Well, and you know, he can still, uh, still let him know he's on two, see if he does. No, he didn't. No. And he didn't get the snooker either, I don't think. These guys started early this afternoon, so it's been a long day. They started at what, 1 o'clock? 
Mm -hmm. Nice shot. Oh. You can cut it in, but it's not easy. You don't like a two railer? Please, it looks like he's. I mean, I would tell him to cut it in myself, oh, but okay. I think so. I mean, follow the cue ball down below the ten. Yeah, is he going to try and put him on the nine there? Was it that, that, yeah, I like he's him cutting, cutting it. It's almost like we, what we just talked about a second ago. I don't really see the safety I'm in love with, and instead of waiting until the shot clock comes out, yeah, you know, go safety. ahead and settle yourself prior to this and yeah. and knock the ball in. It wasn't easy, though. No, no, it was a tough a, shot. But I think if they get in position, my point is to, to do their normal routine before they're going to shoot that ball in, uh, get in it a little earlier, I think he makes that ball myself. Now he could edge the six and put him over top of the eight, trying to use the nine to snook around him. Out comes the jump cue. If he's able to hold it there after, if he makes this ball, he'll have a good shot on the seven. Made it. Oh. Great shot. Yep. Perfect shape. Looking right down the, the line to the pocket for the corner. A ball in the same place. And from there, um, some guys in the pool hall somewhere would probably say elementary, my dear Watson. Mm -hmm. Jump for the nine on the side. One thing I like about James, he really keeps his, uh, you know, when he strokes the ball in competition, to me, it's exactly how he would when he's practicing hitting okay. balls. You know, mm -hmm. very comfortable look, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a lot of these guys, actually. Seems Certain like times they get a little, you see, they, they might get a little uncomfortable. I haven't seen it with James. No, no, or at least he doesn't show much of it, right? Yeah. No. Chris Robinson at one apiece with Kachi. Chris has been playing real well. He's playing great. He, He's been he playing made, very he made well. one heck of an out hill hill earlier and then won another match. Uh, he's played really well. I think I, I, f I forget where I saw that he was playing in the tournament. He he beat some pretty pretty good opponents. Well, I'll tell you, he's, he's a guy that works hard. And been working hard. I mean, kind of. What I like about him is he concerns himself with what he's doing when he's playing his matches. And, you know, of, of course, at first he, he realizes he's playing some of the best that's ever played. But at the same time, he's trying to get he's trying to get to that point himself, right? Mm -hmm. so. And he's young enough to do it. What is he, oh, yeah. uh, 23? Max. Funny little out here. Yeah, Bought he's got to come a long way for this two ball. Well, yeah. on the two, couple of windows. Two to three isn't so easy either, unless he, he's willing to play the three up long. You know, that's where it really makes a difference, uh, making the rack a lot easier on yourself. Now he's going to have to swing the ball by the nine, in between the eight and nine, most likely, and have good speed coming up in there with the six being there, right? Mm -hmm. But if he lays on the side rail a little easier, maybe, or draws off this ball for a short side on the three, well, everything becomes a lot easier, I think. And maybe I'm fooling myself. Maybe there's a lot of room, but I think I'd still look short side. Yeah, I, I think that's the right shot. Yeah, I was looking at going all the way to the head rail and down towards and lay it on the same rail as the three for the bottom corner. Yeah. But then you have to draw it all the way back for the four. Yeah, and what yeah. if you, got, you there's not a huge angle but uh, no. room between no. the eight and nine to get it started, that, that path you were talking about. And that's the path all of us would like to take, but I think this was the correct shot. You know, at, at this level and really at most levels, get that shot versus... You know, going out of your way to get a little better shot. You mm -hmm. know. Oh so. yeah, especially when when there's a pocket you can go into, mm -hmm. like that, like that angle had. A 
little light with the cue ball there, but still okay. Justin probably run this a couple rails for the six on the side. Yeah, he wants to move that. Yeah. Template. He's got to avoid that 10 ball, which he should pretty easily. Ooh. Yeah, you see a little shake of the head there. That ball kind of jumped off the five a little more than he anticipated. He certainly didn't want to go that close, close to, the to the corner. Five, <laughs> but he had to be, he had to miss that 10 ball. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like it, it just hopped a little bit maybe. Um, Cause it definitely made a little bit of a different sound as well. I could hear it up here in the booth a little, mm -hmm. a little louder, but now he's in perfect position to cut this deficit to one game at three to two. I think I'm asleep at the helm. You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I just missed marking the game. Well, once once a week is okay, okay George. <laughs> the week's not over yet. <laughs> yeah, I thought, how early, how long ago did Dennis or Kuyo lose in uh, the winter side? Because I thought he was way down on a loser side match as well. And I see him over there playing like he's in a match as we speak. Maybe he made a big comeback on the loser side. Is that is that right? Well, let's find him. Here he is right here on the winner side. He, uh, who did he, who did he lose to on the winner side, though? I know he's on the one loss Kulin side. Wu. Okay, so has he played a match Seven, on the loser six. side? I think that's the match he's playing now. Let's, okay, okay. Let's see where he's at. Let's see where he went. He went to... Um, L313. Okay, can he hold this ball for the two in the side easily, or does he have to come one row off for the two in the corner? Either should be all right. Ooh, man, man, that's a, just a pretty big mistake there. Looked like he needed a little bit of left English to get past that three ball. He defeated Jason Shaw. That's what I thought. He was way down to Shaw, like six to two. That's what I thought on the loser side. And right now he's. Yeah, he's on the opposite end playing a match. He's playing the winner of. Um, or he's practicing maybe. That's that could what, be. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see Dennis here in action before long, but Justin Berger now with ball in hand after a big position area by James. Justin will go three rails, it looks like. I'm wondering why he's going three rails here for the side. What did, why didn't he just pull the cue ball out and play the three in the corner by the eight? This is a lot of, I guess he's just coming straight across. That's no, okay. Dennis is playing now, now with wow. you, Kioi. And now is the table changing? Did you just see what happened, George? No, I didn't. I was hand? looking at the... I was looking at the, my... Uh, but I yeah. also wonder why he didn't shoot the two and just come out for the three, like I said, in the corner by the eight. This is... That's... Was He's going to get safe here. Mm. No, yep. Mm, I don't think so. He's giving up a shot, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, I can make this. This could get James that two game lead. Did he just add? 
Yeah, it looks like to me the guys have lost a little control where the cue ball's going. We saw a couple position errors, but that was definitely way further than he sure. wanted also, I think. Sure. I mean, I know he wanted to be on that side, but it came pretty close to that side pocket there with the cue ball. I didn't think he'd come down that low, but he's he's in good shape now. Back in line. Okay. Looks like Chris Robinson and Kachi matching rack for rack now mm -hmm. in two apiece. James Aranis with a routine nine and ten to take a two game lead, like George said. And Justin will be breaking off in game number five. Justin was in a good spot there to tie the match and being a little bit the driver's seat, breaking the balls. And you got Wu and Chang battling out over there. Jun Ling Chang and Wu. This is the last round, I believe. Some of the loser sides, uh, they may make an adjustment on that, but is that 10 a.m. tomorrow? Is that right? Or are they going to start 11.30? Let's take a look here. 10 a.m. Saturday. And these guys are playing right now. Well, that's what I mean. They yeah. may they may make an adjustment on that. We'll see. No rest for the weary. For the weary, is that how it goes? No rest for the wicked or the poor, I thought it was. Oh, maybe that's it. Looks like he's close to being snookered, but I think he's got a shot. Yeah, it looks like he does. It's just a nice, nice layout if he has a shoe. He has a shoe. It's tight. Yeah, he's got a go shot. He's got a I shot. I think the three to the five is the only issue here. Make sure you don't get jacked up. And he got clean of it. Should be okay here. And the way the table's playing really just needs right English here. Don't even have to draw the ball, really. Seems like it's really grabbing the English a little more here in the late hours. Yeah, he made it come back easily. I think that's what got both the guys in the last game when they missed position is uh, the English grabbed a little Start bit more. Yeah. Grab more. Change memory the air conditioning? Well, for sure. Come over to the other side, just right. Nice, nice cue ball there. Oh, yeah. And really just perfect just to hold his ball for the seven and the side. Takes him naturally towards the eight. Well, for those of you that are Shane fans, Shane lost to uh, Joshua Filler. Yeah, I watched a lot of that match. Yeah, really were, what, tied at five? Um, four, four, I know that. Four, four I believe four. it was. And then uh, Shane missed that seven ball. He played great, though, I thought. Yeah, he did. I thought he got better as the, as the tournament went, too. Uh, I, th I thought he was going to get into that zone that he gets into mm. when I see him in some of these final matches. And uh, he did, but he just he missed a seven ball that was uh, surprising and then scratched on the break when he had a break with uh, Joshua on the hill. Yeah, on the hill. I watched him a lot today and some throughout the tournament and seemed like Shane was starting to get out from those real difficult places and uh, that's a good sign for him so well he closes the gap back down to one game four to three percentage is changing the Fargo score is underneath their name Aranis has an 807 Bergman is 792 the percentage next to it is uh, will uh, fluctuate with the score. It's almost like a live odds. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, see, Justin is a 30% odds are 30% of winning this match at four to three. Uh, if I'm Justin Bergman, I'm making that. I'm taking that bet, aren't you? Well, probably so, but. Uh, Even seven to three on the money. Is that what that is? Seventy percent to thirty. Basic. Well, uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. You'd be getting two and a third, right? Is that right? Two and Something a third like on that, odds. Yeah. yeah. 
I think there'll be an adjustment eventually when it comes to that on the pro level. You know, mm -hmm. the pro level, I think it's a little bit, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like it's right on, though. I mean, so it's hard to say. It is. It is. Well, Justin now in a great position because unless the two doesn't go by the four, uh, which it might not, really, I mean, difficult rollout, even if it does, but at least you have a little bit more to work with if, if he has to play a combination, but man, difficult situation because Justin's not going to pass on like some clip the ball, run the cue ball safe uh, easy, like in an easy manner. Does James play in one pocket? Oh yeah. And no. he started, he might have he snuckered started. himself here. Yeah, he's been playing it the last couple years. Okay. Okay, so he's definitely not getting this back. He's going to go for this. Yeah, he should. Well, the thing is, he had to roll it far enough to where the combination was tough, but if he rolls it like the middle of the end rail, well, Justin just banks the two away and lays him underneath the four with right. the cue ball. But one thing I would have liked here is to have the cue ball on the rail, which he probably was trying to do. But Justin's definitely, I mean, got to shoot at this. 100% of the time, mm -hmm. uh, especially this situation, de trailing 4-3 to three and on James's break. Well, that's why I asked if he played one pocket because I thought if he left in the middle of the rail, Justin would put him behind the four. I mean, if he got it back, of course, he'd shoot that. It made that nice. Got the cue ball out in the open. Yeah, he's got a but pocket. It's a tight one, but he's got a pocket. And really, it's flat as he was on the shot, believe it or not. Uh, put some speed on it, got some cue ball movement, so nothing to be too upset about here. I'd be pretty stoked the way he hit that ball. Yeah. Make sure he got the cue ball out past the three. That was pretty nice the way he did that. Should come for the three in the lower left. Like this. Really killed it nicely. Not letting it get away from him when it crossed the table. Robinson up three to two in breaking and at the table. Nice little cut here. Nice shape for the five. Probably end up right where he was. Oh, oh but he hung up the three. So Justin at this moment if he gets another opportunity, it won't be this game most likely, but I think, uh, and James will be breaking in the next, huh? Is that right? Or no, Bergman breaks it. At, on, he won the lag, Bergman did, so. It's going to be even, so James will be breaking. Oh, I thought Justin won the lag. I thought James did. Well, there we go. <laughs> we got to work together there, George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, what I was going to get at, maybe a good time for Justin to take a break, a timeout. Yeah. And I was going to say, is is that that missing that three ball? Is that the kind of shot you might miss when you're tired? It's a little thin cut to the like uh, a spot shot. It's a spot yeah, shot to the. And he corner. was pretty heavy on it. He actually overcut it. But yeah, I was actually going to bring up. This is why you practice spot shots because mm -hmm. of these kind of shots. You get real comfortable with that, you know, half ball hit. But yeah, of course, it's been a long day. Well, Justin's getting his break use, so you were correct. I think if I was his ring man, I'd think, hey, go shake that one off. Because he's made three big mistakes, uh, or three mistakes. I say big mistakes. He missed the safety. Remember he had ball in hand on the, I think it was the four, and he tried to draw back and break out the five, six when uh, James was on two fouls. Uh, and he didn't get the, right, sa he right, didn't right, get the right, safety didn't on the five, and James made a nice cut shot. And then he missed position with ball in hand in the last game. And then they're missing the three ball. So this could easily be, you know, like six six to two, really, uh, Justin. Or at least a reverse score of mm -hmm. five three. Mm -hmm. So when in the lag, he still just needs to steal one game from James's break uh, to be right back in this match. And here he's going to get a nice starter with a clear left side of the table so he can go ahead and let his stroke out and come all the way down the table and back up. Where's the two ball? Well, I got a camera in front that's right there by the side pocket, so yeah. 
And it is up and down, no problem there. It's going to be all about from the three to the four. That's really the shot in the rack. Yeah, the two ball won't be there to interfere, so. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is important. Uh, this is important. I mean, if you get real good on this two, you could drop on the three, where the three of the four is not hard at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a clean stroke there. He got on the wrong side a little bit. Yeah, but he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. He, just he didn't really want to go the end rail anyways. He wanted to be able to shoot the three real full, though, when he draws two rails out and swings the cue ball. Mm -hmm. So that way he's kind of coming into position slowly. And that should be enough. He wasn't convinced at first, though, was he? No. This is where you just don't let up on pulling the ball, really, I think. Yeah, he just swings his two rails. Well, he's gonna Almost a three, yeah. Come all the way around. There you go. Yeah, but he's going to maybe get jacked up. If he, that's where you want to really hold it. Okay, escaped with the cue ball there just by an inch or so. Yeah, it just gets over that six or gets it lays it on the rail. He's over the five. Yeah, that's why he wanted to come much tighter, but... It's just a matter of making the ball and leaving the cue ball there. Does he, he can get it off? The five ball's off the rail a little bit, so. Is that the second one he's done? He did one on the other corner just a little bit ago, right? Yeah, and probably tried to get a bit more out of the cue ball there than needed because if you get straight on the five, you can draw out of that and cut sure. the six, I think, pretty easily. And I think the pocket opposite, meaning the eight made the six you know, to the other pocket or big, big pocket, right? Big hole. Right. I just, Hard to miss. That's why I thought just making that ball, and I said the five's off the rail, and he'll come out for this. There we go. Wow. Last time he hung a ball uh, in the other pocket, uh, James made quick work of it, and now it's it's going to be the same here. Well. Well, he's okay. He can be, he can beat the scratch with no problem, oh, really, yeah, with a high ball. That'll probably hit where the rack is, where the template is. Yeah. The cue ball. I'll tell you, that template's leaning over the rail there. Now, is it a foul if it hits the template? In the turn, I mean, many tournaments I've played, it is, so. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you what the rule is here, and I don't think I think he's going to avoid it now. He yeah. wasn't so sure about that one at first, <laughs> <laughs> so I think it is a little fatigue with the guys, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's say they're here at 12, 12, 30, hit some balls maybe if they could. I would uh, bet much earlier at the pool room, George. Mm -hmm. So James in a great position now to go up 6-3 and breaking to get to the final four of the winter side. Some call this a warm-up for next week, but I'm not for these guys. Well, these guys want that money. They're 17,000 first place, 10,000 second place. Now, for them to be in the, for the winner of this to go to the uh, final four on the, on the winter side, mm -hmm. they're doing pretty good. And then next week they're looking at, uh, I think it's 30,000 for first place. So they they're looking at a 47,000 payday in 10 days. Yeah, and of course the money's always nice, but these guys really recognize the fields. And when they talk oh. about tournaments won, uh, they talk about 128-man field with, well, pretty much all 64 for next week in it, right. and then a few more even added to that. Uh, so, I mean. And that's, that's pretty much the top 25, top 30 probably in the world, with the oh, exception yeah. of one, I think it was. I went through, I know we were talking about the top 20, and I went through and uh, got the next top 20, so the, we had the top 40, and see there's one, two, three. Oh, he hit those well. Cue ball, though. He's going to get a cut shot on the one to win this match, because he's definitely attacking from here. There's five guys from the top uh, of the top 40 that aren't here. 
the WPA rankings. I mean, I think he's got a kind of play position on this somewhat where the cue ball's at now. Play for the same pocket. At, I would do that, I think. Rather than adding a bunch of spin, just shoot this naturally and come two rails right between the six and the nine, mm -hmm. I think. And and just like, oh, is it gonna leak? No, I think uh, he's, gonna be okay. he's got a shot. It's not easy. Ooh. I think maybe it did leak. Yeah, I think he's okay. No, he's hooked. I'm looking right down the oh, line. Wow. Yeah. He hooked to make it anyways. He may have a thin hit to play safe and bring the cue ball kind of back where it's at now, cutting the two over towards the five. But he don't think he has the play to make it. There's going to be a gap here for Justin to get something started. Ouch. I thought he hit that real good to get there. I thought he did, too. I thought the speed was going to be pretty perfect because he hit the center of the pocket with the one. Normally the speed's good on that. And, you know, you hit a little heavy to the side or a little thin, well, the speed can get away from you. Mm -hmm. But I love this little partial stun that he uses on those shots from distance. Man, what a tough strike that is. You know, to hit it lightly enough to get the draw on it, to get the angle, but not mm -hmm. overhit it. To where you run past position. That's hard. He delivers the cue real well. That's the type of shot you shoot when you're close to the ball, but very difficult some seven, eight feet away. Okay. This nine ball could come into play, but I think he I think he holds it. This or will he use the second rail? I don't think so. I think he holds it like you said. Yeah. Well, the thing for James is, you know, James knows he's in a position that, even though he's not trying to, you know, worry about it, but he's in a position where he may just get to break the balls one more time mm -hmm. with uh, Justin win the, winning the lag. If Justin get out here and put a rack together and make it 6-5, that may be the last moment for James to win this match. Down here. You know, I look at those shots and I think to myself, you know, bring it all the way down. And I'm sitting there going, no, he's perfect where he is. Yeah. And the main reason for there is you don't want to hit that, if you don't have to, that seven to the pocket with that low outside. It makes it bobble a little bit. And, you know, just like center of the table from above the ball, really hard to get in trouble. You come down and you overhit a little bit and spins on you. You mm -hmm. spin and get a little straight on the rail or, or a little straight. Now you got to draw your ball out. And but the main reason also, I think, like I said, the way the ball is going to the pocket. Now that one may have to slow down a little bit. I was about to say that okay. usually you overrun this, but his angle came in real nice for this. He used the rail to kind of stop it and it was high on the rail. Didn't get too far down to get in trouble. And he got his fourth game. Yeah, so James will have, even if um, Justin wins this game, he'll have He'll have um, the break. But just one to win. Yeah, but I'll tell you, he can put a lot of heat with a break around here. I mean, oh, yes. <clears throat> be one thing if he broke and played safe and James had a chance to kick out of it and this and that. But if he breaks and runs out here, put a little more heat, I think. A little heater, it could motivate him. You're talking about James. James, yeah. Well, yeah, he's not going to back off the break, but it'll make him feel like maybe he, he needs to get it done on that next rack a little bit more. And mm, nine balls so down. Okay. He's going to get a shot on the one. Yeah. And he's he's going to. nice. I think he's going to have to put a little inside here. 
and go ahead and grip the ball. Don't roll it too much. Go ahead. And, you could have hit a high ball and just ease it, right? But I still like them attacking a little more with a little left and put a little more pace on the ball and you control what's going mm -hmm. on. Thing is, is he going to have to play the three up long? Could fall on this two ball to where he can't really get position on the top side of it. Just depends on how close he gets to it, George. It depends on how tight he holds it with the inside. Looks he, like he's just hitting straight, yeah. so he's easing it in a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. Okay, if he doesn't get too elevated, okay, this is that position I was talking Ouch. about. Oh, he's just going to stay there for the three in the opposite corner. I think that's smart. Well, that's what he has to do with yeah. for, uh, where he left the cue ball. If he yeah. can, if he could stroke the ball, he might, he might try to do something else or think about doing something else. Well, makes the shot a little easier. He knows he's going to have to shoot the four, so he'll find that place on the rail he wants to get to shoot the four. I think it's, yeah, you got to follow here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. I'd rather follow and take a little cut on the four rather than shoot into a fat, you know what I mean? Yes, so. uh, especially when, uh, uh, you know, you you have a tendency of wanting to follow the ball to the hole. Well, yeah. Just come up a little here. And you definitely want to get off the rail when you shoot the five, right? So, oh, he got a lot out of that. He did pretty well there, getting about two inches off the side rail, something like that. That was more than I thought he'd be able to get. I, I agree. Yeah, he's looking good here. This is still a little you know, close to the rail, but he doesn't have to do too much with the cue ball. Just pocket the ball. Well, that fatigue there, you could see a little movement. Wasn't yeah, quite these, sure. These guys are tired. I mean, it's what, what time is it here? Oh, it's late. It's 12.50. It's almost 1 o'clock in the morning. That's prime time in Vegas, isn't it? Well, <laughs> for some people. For a Friday night, you're probably yeah. right. Uh-oh. He's okay. Oh, he's okay. Yeah. yeah. He may just stop right there if he fell dead straight and shoot the seven all the way up. Oh, he's going to go forward and play the seven in the side, so he's got a little angle. Or maybe he's just going to maneuver it over there. Well, didn't get quite good there. He can draw to the side back and never just play it in the corner. Yeah, he'll shoot it in the corner. He's pretty straight, believe it or not. Won't, won't go to the rail, I don't think. And just a forward a little bit, maybe a hair of a stun. Oh, he went to the rail. Because he was pretty straight there, so mm -hmm. still pretty comfortable, even though we've seen some mistakes by Justin here in this match. Some he'd like to have back. Maybe he's getting a little excited here. He's feeling the burn. <laughs> maybe. Catching his second wind, coming down on that ten ball to leave himself straight in. Well, anytime you play pool like these guys where they give so much concern to position and stuff like that, it's really a long term kind of deal. Meaning they want to play that kind of pool, you know, all year and just kind of figure they're gonna have some great results if they do that. Well, they're taking a break. We will too. We'll be right back.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Tim. James is about to break the balls here. We'll get that uh, logo off the screen. And you heard the break. Good shot on the one. He's got one ball down. Shot on the one. Comes around two rails for a position on the two ball. Looks pretty natural. Brings yeah. the cue ball between the three and the four. Yeah, just got to have good speed here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, the tendency here is to over hit it just because you're conscious of the three ball, right? So you just got to trust your touch. Use your talent, I call it. Just coming two rails to an open area. That looks really nice. And he played it a little tighter. You know, that way. To make sure he got by it. And, and quicker. And yeah, quicker, right? Yeah. Quicker and into the four. Maybe he even played with hit the touch the four. Exactly he did. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just because it, it makes him have more comfortable speed coming in to hold the two and also get by the three a little quicker. Mm -hmm combination of both really work. Still a lot of work though. Look at does he does he try to he would have liked to have played the three off the nine to open that eight ball up, but no, he just he'll... he just fell straight on the I two. Think he could play the three in the side. And he fell oh, too no, he, he fell, fell he too fell straight. Okay. Yeah. He would have loved to have been able to move that three, like I said, to play it off the nine to open the the room. nine? Yeah, open the eight ball up a lot, right? But this wasn't there. <laughs> I meant to say the eight and yeah. I said the nine. A long days for <laughs> us as well. Uh, you're always saving me. Oh, you're good, George. Here we go. Still got to work. He's got some work on that eight ball. Sure does. And I might have went out of my way on that two to the three, maybe because you did, anytime you're playing a ball, right, off another ball, mm -hmm. you don't have to get so straight in on the three to be real comfortable knocking the three in off the nine, meaning you got a huge pocket to hit the nine a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. So you can afford to play a little thinner cut towards the pocket and be comfortable because you don't have to hit the center of the pocket. The pocket's really about an extra five inches wide, maybe four inches wide with the nine being there. I like the way you hit that uh, four ball on the side and, and came off the bottom rail straight back up instead of towards the five. He didn't. Most people would would use a you know right hand English and have that cue ball come towards the five and probably roll up on the five. He hit that very nice to get on the five that way. Is there any chance he doesn't even play at the eight uh, offensively? Just plays like a three rail safety around with the eight ball or something like that. Mm. I, mean, I don't think so. I think he goes for the, he goes for this. Well, he, yeah. I'll tell you I what. He out. better go with just a high ball. If he tries to pull this ball backwards, he he, had he a can nine, lose it. Well, he had a nine ball. I don't know if you remember the similar where he tried to come backwards off of it. Very that, early in the game. Well, in or the match, in the yeah. other match he played okay. uh, yeah. that w you and I did, to where he pulled the ball off the rail if he tries to come back. Oh, he hit it great. He hit it great. What a shot. Most likely, James Arana should chip this nine in the side and advance to our final four. Justin Bergen will be back. Actually, I think both guys will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow, no matter who wins and who loses. Oh, he played the corner. Okay. Very happy young man there. Conversely, Justin not too happy, but again, he'll be back. He'll go to the one last side, but uh, he doesn't have too far to go to come back to uh, to have a chance to win the tournament. That's right. And it'll be 10 a.m. tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, at 11.30 on the stream. Thank you very much.